Welcome to this edition of Christian World News, everyone. I'm Wendy Griffith. Thanks for joining us. Well, imagine seeing your husband, brother, or father brutally killed by religious fanatics. That's what happened to many families when ISIS executed 21 Egyptian Christians in February. While the horrible video led to worldwide outrage, some families are happy that the martyrs kept their faith. And as Gary Lane found out, they're ready to forgive. I was very proud that my husband stood firm in his faith and that he didn't deny Jesus. That surprising reaction is happening 150 miles south of Cairo, in the village of El Aour. Residents there honor the sacrifice of 21 Egyptians, brutally murdered last February by ISIS. Their pictures are prominently displayed in the sanctuary of Virgin Mary Church. Thirteen attended this church. The martyrs left behind family members, like 23-year-old Miriam Farhat. She became a widow when the militants beheaded her husband Malik Ibrahim in Libya. She first learned of his murder when she saw this now infamous video on local television. We were very sad for the first two days, but we hadn't seen the video. When we saw them in the video calling to Jesus, we were very comforted. And that's why Miriam and other families say they are now joyful, not sad. Babawi Alham's brother Samuel was among those killed. We were always praying that God would make them steadfast in their faith. We were very happy with what they said on the video, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. When we found out they had been killed for being Christian, we were very comforted because these were God's children and He took them. Although Samuel's wife and children now live without a husband and father, his family told CBN News their faith is stronger. They forgive the jihadists and even pray for ISIS. I pray for them that God may open their heart and they may know the truth and know that what they do is wrong and then do the right thing. Jesus told us to forgive every sin and we forgive them and we hope that they can come to know Jesus. Christians here in Egypt are encouraged to know they're not alone. Back in the United States, there's a growing movement among Christians there to demonstrate unity and solidarity with those who are suffering for Christ in the Middle East. What we thought was, how could we identify and stand in solidarity with our brothers and sisters in Christ who are being brutalized around the world for their Christian faith? What tangible thing could we do? What practical thing could we do? Immediately, orange jumpsuits came to mind. Mahoney and others launched the hashtag orange jumpsuit campaign. The movement has expanded to orange scarves, sweaters, and ribbons. It's to remind our brothers and sisters that we love them and we're standing with them and to remind decision makers here in America and across the globe, the free nations of the world, we cannot be silent on this issue. Mahoney says the response has been amazing. Non-Christians have joined in as well. A Jewish rabbi to stand in solidarity with persecuted Christians is dying his beard orange, which I think is incredible, and I can't wait to see that. Miriam was encouraged after she viewed cell phone photos of Americans wearing orange. May the Lord make their love grow and grow. We are very happy with their love. We don't deserve their love. Mahoney says every five minutes around the world, a Christian is killed for his faith. People don't understand the kind of barbarism and brutality they are going through. And you know, when I visit persecuted Christians in the Middle East, there's one thing they always ask. It doesn't matter if it's Iraq, Syria, wherever it might be, it's this. Please remember us. And wearing orange on the job or at church helps people remember them. I think people need to understand that if we do not act quickly, the public expression of Christianity may be extinguished in the Middle East. As Elie Wiesel, Holocaust survivor and Nobel Peace Prize winner says, we must always take sides. Silence only helps the oppressor, never the oppressed. Miriam also has a message for others who have suffered or still face danger from ISIS. Don't be sad or cry. God will support us all. He will fulfill his promise that he is the father of the orphans and the widows. Gary Lane, CBN News, Cairo, Egypt.